Today we're going to look at problem solving and data analysis questions from practice test 2 of the math test calculator. Number 2. A quality control manager at a factory selects 7 light bulbs at random for inspection out of every 400 light bulbs produced. At this rate, how many light bulbs will be inspected if the factory produces 20,000 light bulbs? So this is 7 for every 400 is equal to an unknown number for every 20,000. There's a couple of different techniques on how to solve this. You can identify how, what do we have to multiply 400 by to get 20,000 and do the same to 7. Turns out it's 50, so 7 times 50 is 350. Alternately, you can cross multiply. 7 times 20,000 is equal to 400 times x. So you get 400x is equal to 140,000. And we divide both sides by 400. You get x is equal to 350. Number four, how much money will the performer earn when 20 people attend a performance? So we, need, we know that when eight people attend, we earn 120. So now we know that 20 people are attending, but we don't know how much we earn. Uh, we can use the same cross multiplication technique. 8 times x is 8x, and 120 times 20 is 2400. When we divide both sides by 8, we get that x is 300. Number 5. The performer uses 43% of the money earned to pay the costs involved in putting on each performance. The rest of the money earned is the performer's profit. What is the profit the performer makes at a performance where 8 people attend? So when 8 people attend, we earn 120. So that's our starting point. And if 43% is used for costs, and everything else is profit. To figure out profit, we can take 100 minus 43, and we end up with 47% profit. To figure out the profit for this, we take the $120, and we multiply it by 0 0.57. That's how you multiply percentages. If you do so, you end up with C, $68.40. Number 11. Tony is planning to read a novel. The table above, or to the left, shows information about the novel, Tony's reading speed and the amount of time he plans to spend reading the novel each day. If Tony reads at the rates given in the table, which of the following is closest to the number of days it would take Tony to read the entire novel? If we walk through these conversions step by step, we know there are 349,168 words in the novel. And to cancel out this unit, words, it starts out on top, so we want it to be on the bottom. And we're going to use this ratio of how many words are read in one minute. And we know how many minutes there are in an hour. And we know that Tony reads three hours in one day. If I multiply these three values on the bottom, 250, 60, and 3, I get 45,000. And if I divide 349,168 by this 45,000, I get about 7.76, which is closest to B, 8 days. Number 13. A researcher conducted a survey to determine whether people in a certain large town prefer watching sports on television to attending the sporting event. The researcher asked 117 people who visited a local restaurant on a Saturday, and seven people refused to respond. Which of the following factors makes it least likely that a reliable conclusion can be drawn about the sports watching preferences of all people in the town? Choice D is correct. Survey research is an efficient way to estimate the preferences of a large population. In order to reliably generalize the results of survey research to a larger population, the participants should be randomly selected from all people in that population. Since this survey was conducted with a population that was not randomly selected, the results are not reliably representative of all people in the town. Therefore, of the given factors, where the survey was given makes it least likely that a reliable conclusion can be drawn about the sports watching preferences of all people in the town. If you're asking people who are watching sports on a TV whether they prefer TV or the live event, of course they're going to prefer the TV. 14. According to the line of best fit in the scatter plot above, which of the following best approximates the year in which the number of miles traveled by air passengers in country X was estimated to be 550 billion? So if I follow over this line in red from the y-axis, 
550 billion is right between 500 and 600. And where does this cross the line of best fit? Right about here, which is just before 2005 and just after 2000. That's why our answer is C, 2003. 15. The distance traveled by Earth in one orbit around the Sun is 580 million miles. Earth makes one complete orbit around the Sun in one year. Of the following, which is the closest to the average speed of Earth in miles per hour as it orbits the Sun? So I can set up my conversion like this. If there are 580 million miles per one orbit, how long does an orbit take? Well, one orbit takes 365 days. And I know I want to find the average speed in miles per hour, so how many hours are there in a day? This cancels out orbit and orbit and days and days, and I'm left with miles per hour. So the unit is correct. And if I take 580 million divided by 365 divided by 24, I get closest to A. Number 16. The table to the left summarizes the results of 200 law school graduates who took the bar exam. If one of the surveyed graduates who passed the bar exam is chosen at random for an interview, what is the probability that the person chosen did not take the review course? So how many graduate students passed the bar exam? That's this entire column. 18 plus 7. So on the bottom of my fraction, I'm going to put 25. So I'm choosing one person at random out of those 25. And what's the probability that they did not take the review course? Well, did not is the second row. So I'm going to put a 7 on top. 7 over 25. B was the best choice. 17. The atomic weight of an unknown element in atomic mass units is approximately 20% less than that of calcium. The atomic weight of calcium is 40 AMU. Which of the following best approximates the atomic weight in AMU of the unknown element? So if something weighs 20% less, I can start off with 100% and subtract 20, and it's going to be 80% of that total. How do I do that as a decimal? How do I multiply or take 80% of 40? 40 times 0.8. And this gives me 32. Number 18. A survey was taken of the value of homes in a county, and it was found that the mean home value was 165000 and the median home value was 125000 Which of the following situations could explain the difference between the mean and median home values in the county? C. There are a few homes that are valued much more than the rest. The mean and median values of a data set are equal when there is a symmetrical distribution. For example, a normal distribution is symmetrical. If the mean and median values are not equal, then the distribution is not symmetrical. Outliers are a small group of values that are significantly smaller or larger than the other values in the data. When there are outliers in the data, the mean will be pulled in their direction, either smaller or larger, while the median remains the same. The example in the question has a mean that is larger than the median, and so an appropriate conjecture is that large outliers are present in the data, that is, there are a few homes that are valued much more than the rest. 19. What is the median number of siblings for all the students surveyed? How many students were surveyed in total? 300 from two different schools, so a total of 600. To find the median, I could cross off the largest and cross off the smallest, but since we're dealing with 600 numbers, that's not very practical. So what's another approach? What I chose to do here is I added the two columns, Lincoln School and Washington School, to figure out the number of siblings for all students surveyed. And out of these 600 values, I don't have to count off from the top and the bottom to find the median. I know that for 600 values, the median is going to be right in the middle. And in fact, since it's an even number, it'll be the average of the 300th and the 301st value. So where does that 300th value fall? Does it fall in the zero sibling range? No, because the two first 260 data points do. But we're looking for the 300th, which falls in the one sibling. That's why B is the correct answer. Number 20. Based on the, based on the survey data, which of the following most accurately compares the expected total number of students with four siblings at the two schools? While both surveys showed that 10 out of the 300 students surveyed had four siblings. There are different 
total number of students at each school. In fact, Lincoln School had 2,400 and Washington had 3,300. So if I multiply that proportion by the total number of students, I can predict that for the larger populations, there are 80 and 110 students with four siblings, or four or more siblings. So that brings me to C, the total number of students with four siblings at Washington School is expected to be 30 more than at Lincoln School, because the difference between 80 and 110 is 30. 27. Two samples of water of equal mass are heated to 60 degrees Celsius. One sample is poured into an insulated container, and the other sample is poured into a non-insulated container. The samples are then left for 70 minutes to cool in a room having a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. The graph above shows the temperature of each sample at 10 minute intervals. Which of the following statements correctly compares the average rates at which the temperatures of the two samples change? With this blue line, I have traced the drop in temperature for the water in the insulated container. With this red line, I have traced the drop for the non-insulated container. Not perfectly, but the idea is there. There's a rapid drop in the beginning, and then things level off. Whereas for the insulated container, there's a pretty consistent decrease in temperature. And you'll notice that the, they both eventually will level off around 25 degrees, which is the temperature of the room. Choice D is correct, because in the intervals from 0 to 10 minutes and from 10 to 20 minutes, the rates of change of temperature of the non-insulated sample are of greater magnitude, or the red line is dropping faster. Whereas, in the intervals from 40 to 50 and from 50 to 60, the rates of change of temperature of the insulated sample are of greater magnitude. At that point, the non-insulated container is already so close to the room temperature that it has leveled off, and the insulated container has preserved heat to the point where there's still some heat to drop. There's still some temperature to drop. 31. A coastal geologist estimates that a certain country's beaches are eroding at a rate of 1.5 feet per year. According to the geologist's estimate, how long will it take in years for the country's beaches to erode by 21 feet? So 21 feet at a rate of 1.5 feet per year. So I could very formally write it out like this. And all we're doing is 21 divided by 1.5, which is 14 years. 32. If h hours and 30 minutes is equal to 450 minutes, what is the value of h? So there are 60 minutes in an hour, so I could write it like this. 60h plus 30 is equal to 450. Then I'll subtract 30 from both sides to get h by itself, and I'm left with 60h is equal to 420. Last step is to divide both sides by 60, and I get h is equal to 7. 37. According to the formula, what will be the number of plants two years from now if k is equal to 4,000? Round your answer to the nearest whole number. So to look at this formula briefly, the population or the, of the species next year is equal to the population of the plant species this year plus 20% controlled for the maximum number of plants the environment is able to support. Since they're asking us to figure out the number of plants two years from now, we will have to apply this formula twice. So we're going to plug in the 3,000 current uh, population for n this year and k as 4,000. When we do so that looks like this and you'll notice with all of these zeros you can pretty much cancel them out and what is 1 minus 3 fourths? It's 1 fourth. So we're taking a fifth of 3,000 by multiplying by 0.2 and then we're adjusting that growth by only taking a fourth of it. Then our new population becomes 3,150 and we plug this back into the formula, replacing all of the 3,000s with our, with our new population of 3,150. And when we round this to the nearest whole number, we get 3,284. 38. The botanist would like to increase the number of plants that the environment can support so that the population of the species 
will increase more rapidly. If the botanist's goal is that the number of plants will increase from 3,000 this year to 3,360 next year, how many plants must the modified environment support? So into that same equation, 3,000 is going to be n this year, 3,360 is going to be n next year, and we are solving for k. When I replace those variables as such, this is what I get. My current population, plus 20% of it, controlled for the maximum population, is going to be equal to 3,360. If I want to solve for k, I can divide everything by 3,000. So I'll divide here, I'll divide here, and I'll divide here. And I'm left with this equation. I can subtract 1 from both sides to cancel out this 0.2. I could divide by 0 0.12, which is the same thing as multiplying by 5. And if I do this, I'm left with 0 0.60 on the left and 1 minus 3,000 divided by k on the right. I'm going to move around my terms. I'm going to subtract the 0.60 so it goes over here. I'm going to add the 3,000 over k so it goes over here. I can multiply both sides by k, canceling this out. And then I will divide both sides by 0 0.4. So I have 3,000 divided by 0 0.4 is equal to k. All told, 7,500 is the final answer.